We want to take time today to really give thanks to the Lord for all that He's done over this past year here at Cornerstone. Uh, Normally in the month of December, uh, Marwan Rifka uh, from our church board, he comes and gives a a financial update so that everybody can kind of be apprised of how things are financially. And so usually out of the service, we carve like eight minutes for him to give that kind of a financial update. And then I, I have to trim my message so that we can accommodate the time. And uh, this year I decided, you know, rather than try to, to, to trim the message, why don't we just take time to just spend in today's service just giving thanks to the Lord. Not th- the financial aspect is going to be one tiny aspect, but in all the many ways that God has been working in our congregation. And so uh, with, with that in mind, um, I'm not going to be teaching today. We're going to continue in our study through the Minor Prophets next Sunday. Uh, but today's going to be a day of thanksgiving and praise. You know, it is important sometimes for us to remember the Lord in all of the wonderful ways that He is at work. And so I will tell you that this is something new, this, you know, us doing this today. Um, and I'm going to tell you my reluctance in doing it. Uh, I, I'm always aware of Proverbs 27, 2 says, let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger, but not your own lips. And I've always been reluctant to talk about, here's what's happening. Here's what the Lord is doing. Here's here's how, you know, you have been involved in the kingdom's work and perhaps not even knowing things because I never wanted to sound like we were singing our own song. But a couple of years ago, I had lunch with a, a gentleman who attends our church. In fact, he was one of the original families when we were starting out our church 28 years ago at Simpson Middle School. And he's from Great Britain, and we were having lunch together, and he said to me, Gary, (laughs) he said, Gary, how is it that our church is not doing this, 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 and this? Shouldn't we be doing this, this, and this? I said, David, we are. And he says, oh, I didn't know. (laughs) Well. And then then he would ask me another question. How about this, this, and this? Why, Why aren't we doing this? I said, we are. He said, I said that again to me, I didn't know. He says, I don't think the congregation knows you. And I said, you know what, you're right. Here's the deal. In an effort to try to stay as far away from saying, here's all the great things that we're doing because it's really about what God is doing through us, I've actually robbed you of the opportunity of giving thanks. And I came to that realization. And so today's going to be a day of giving thanks and talking about what he has been doing through our congregation that you might be encouraged and, and give thanks to the Lord with us so that you can join in on that thanksgiving with all that the Lord has done. So I want to say from the onset of, you know, the next 35 minutes that we have together, that God gets all the glory for everything you're about to hear. We want to make sure that He is praised and lifted up and glorified in all things that are mentioned here. Um, we don't want to take credit or glory for anything. It's just a matter of saying, here's what the Lord has done. Psalm 105, 1 and 2 gives us instructions in this regard. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Sing to Him, sing psalms to Him, talk of all His wondrous works. So that's what we're going to do today. And we are going to start with a very brief, it'll be really the smallest portion of what we're going to talk about today. But Marwan Rifka is going to come and he's going to give a financial update so that you can understand what the Lord is doing financially here. And, um, and then after that, I'm going to come back up. Marwan and I are going to tag team today. And we're just going to kind of talk about all the Lord is doing. But we'll start with that annual update for you with Marwan Rifka. Marwan. Thanks, Gary. So as Gary said, this is a Thanksgiving update. But, but since people are, are new to the church and haven't been with us when we gave you the financial update, I want to bring some people alongside with us here. We're going to cover three topics, financial, the biggest portion will be giving thanks, and then we wrap it up at the very end. So the first part is the financial status. We're going to give you a very quick update where we are, but bring the people who are new to the church. A few years ago, we moved from our old building, very small place, to what the Lord provided here for us. We had to go get a loan from the bank and through stewardship, through prayer, through everything is like, how can we be good stewards during that time? Because our church operates with a very 
good concept of not getting debt only that will be on the mortgage that we have. So the first part I wanted to share with you is like, we went to the banks 30 years, we said no, 20 years, no. We landed a 10 years mortgage with your generosity and we sale of the other property, we moved it down to seven years. Two years later in this process, we are now down to five years. With last month's payment, praise the Lord, we can say it's less than five years because of your generosity and your things. <clears throat> So we will always want to make sure, as we do in this aggressive payment, the, the, the board and the church, we keep praying of paying the debt down, but at the same time praying, what does the Lord have to do more for here in this campus? So we're balancing that, and we're just thankful for you that you guys are just faithful to keep doing what the Lord puts on your heart. Which brings us to the theme of the rest of the day, is the themes of thanksgiving of what the Lord has already done here and outside of our church, and we want to spend most of our time on that process today. Today in this, we're going to cover just some, literally just some highlights of what goes on because of the time, uh, and most of it will probably go unnoticed, like Gary said, unless we talk about it. Once a year we will do that, and it's only accomplished because of God's favor and goodness to us and your generosity. And with that, I'm going to turn it to Pastor Gary for a few more minutes. So we, we first want to start with uh, just what the Lord is doing within the four walls of our church. You know, when we, when we started Cornerstone 28 years ago, we're meeting over at Simpson Middle School. There was no young adult ministry. There was no youth ministry. There was no singles ministry, men's ministry, women's ministry. Our children's ministry was our son, Tyler. That was it. <laughs> it was one. Um, and so, you know, the Lord has matured us over the years and grown us over the, uh, over the years. Some people, you know, look at Cornerstone and think, well, it's a big church, but it wasn't always like that. I mean, you know, a woman doesn't give birth to a full-grown adult, all right? A church is born, and then it grows, and it matures, and it learns to crawl, and then it learns to talk a little bit, and then it learns to walk. And over the years, God has grown us and matured us and helped us, and, and He's still helping us in this journey. And so we just have committed ourselves from the founding days until today, and will always be the case here, we've committed ourselves to two foundational principles. We're going to teach the Bible, and we're going to worship the Lord. Amen. That's what we're about here. We're going to teach the Bible, we're going to worship the Lord. And in the course of going through the Bible from cover to cover, lives are changed. God's Word won't return void, but will accomplish the purposes for which it is sent. Is what Isaiah tells us. Paul tells us in Romans, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And as the Bible is taught, people's uh, uh, lives are changed, uh, people get saved, marriages get restored, prodigals return. I mean, there's, there's just a, a number of things that God begins to do as He is worshipped and as His Word is studied and then applied to our lives. And so all that you're about to hear as Marwan highlights some of these things are just the outflow of those two foundational principles. We're going to teach the Bible, we're going to worship the Lord, and all that the Lord has done, we just are so thankful for. So he's going to, he, today you're going to feel like you're drinking a little bit out of a fire hose rather than a garden hose, but uh, he's going to rapid fire some of these things to let you know what's going on around here. So as we said, we're going to take a condensed look of what God is doing here because of his generosity and his goodness to us. And uh, I would like us, because as we are reimagining the Cornerstone Chapel model of outreach, we put those layers out. The very first layer is what do we do within our church? We are a church. First thing we need to know that we are taking care of what the church is all about. And we start with that first focus because of that. This is our foundation layer. And these are the, some of the things that are what we are doing, ministering within the body of the Cornerstone Chapel. So let's start with our youngest. For our weekly uh, children ministry, we are on pace to have 46,000 kids during the whole year walk into doors and get ministered to for all the year. We do so with the blessing of 300 volunteers of you guys every week who help us do it in a small age-appropriate uh, classes. Each Sunday we have about average of 900. It goes up and down, but about 900. Uh, kids being taught, and also this year we, are, we were blessed to be able to give up over 170 new believers' Bible for kids who have made a profession of faith to the Lord. So the, the, the <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
<clears throat> they also, we, we conduct the, what I call a best in class uh, vacation Bible school uh, in the summer, not just for our kids of the church, but for also for the community. Again, with the help of young volunteers and all adult volunteers who engage the children in an appropriate way, in a word, in a dynamic way, in a relevant way. This year's theme was uh, in the wild. I always say, as far as I'm concerned, they ought to fire any, any writer who encourages young children to go wild. So, but it was a successful one. But when you see the children reacting to the message the way we have uh, done with them all year long, it is worth all the humongous efforts that goes into providing this children ministry and to pull it off. This year we ministered to over 900 children who attended our VBS. In, the, in total this year, we saw 200 come to accept Christ as their savior, and that's all worth it. <clears throat> Next, we have is a ministry called for special needs. I only have a picture of, because we're redoing the whole area and the children ministry, we're expanding so much. We're just tearing down the walls and building it. But again, we've been so thankful this year, not just for the children, but for adults, for, for the community, people who know we, we, we do this service, and they come here from all around the community with the help of faithful and dedicated staff and volunteers. They had major milestones this year in, the, in this ministry. For the third year in a row, they all brought their own Christ, uh, Operation Christmas Child boxes. They filled it and they were able to do it. They did their own VBS. They, one of the children there, Kate, who has a Down syndrome, is now a volunteer on the children's worship team helping to lead worship currently with the three-year-old. So this past October, they had a very largely popular special needs coffee house event which drew people from all around the community. This special department of the church has grown nearly 75% from last year. Praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> Our middle school ministry continues to establish our young people in the faith, the middle school students' events. Uh, we add them all for the whole year, uh, attracted about 2,000 students over the whole entire year. We host in the church, physically in the building on Sundays and Wednesdays, 16,000 middle school kids will just walk through the doors to be ministered to, when they, where they are taught from the Word of God in every activity that we do with them. Uh, it was also good to see 178 middle school students actively volunteer and serve in middle school and in children's ministry. They are becoming part of what the DNA of the church is. Heaven rejoice this year, 100 of those middle school students accepted Christ at one of our meetings and then events. <clears throat> Our high school students worship with us in the sanctuary along with their special meetings sometimes when we are meeting here. This year, it also they came alongside a community in West Virginia to share their faith, help with the project to reach kids in the community for Jesus. Uh, they also have their own events and fellowship and fun time. They also volunteer to help communities in need and build things for them as they need it. They are continually equipped with the, we continually equip them with the truth of God's word as they are preparing to deal with a much more secular world that they face as, as they finish their school and so on. They also get away in winter and summer retreats to fellowship and training from the word of God. And in, in this past year, 300 high schoolers had the chance, opportunity to go deep and grow in the, in the Lord in both of those camps. And we thank God for that wonderful ministry too. Our women's ministry continues to thrive. It's one of the highlights of the church here. They gather routinely for Bible studies. They have fellowship evenings. <clears throat> They also, their conference attracts people from all the community, women from all the community uh, and other churches. Women of all ages have chance to come and connect and be, be in fellowship. Uh, the women's ministry, discipleship ministry also uh, trains and equips those who want to grow in their faith and walk with the Lord. We are grateful to see so many women <clears throat> ministered to through this ministry. This last conference they had not long ago attracted over 1,000 women to this one event that they had this year. The men's ministry, same thing, hosts many events where we can gather and hear specific things for men that we need to hear and, and meditate on, from breakfast studies that we have, uh, <clears throat> to conferences that we hold, to fellowship time. And I said earlier, this uh, men's fellowship team Football has more wins than, than the Redskins have this year, so. <clears throat> that, that, that's because he's from Minnesota. 
So he's a Minnesota fan. Don't be hating on our team. <laughs> the men's discipleship, at, uh, also the men's discipleship had their own training, and they also prepared those to be better, better fathers, better husbands, equipped in the relationship with the Lord in the workplace and so on. For the whole year, when you combine all the attendees for the men, we had over 2,000 people who attended all the various events at the men's events that we conducted over this year. Uh, the, we have an over 30-year-old singles ministry. They hold events all through the year. It allows them to fellowship together, whether on our property or on outdoors, on their own K-groups. They also <clears throat> join together in spontaneous times of legal bowling, hiking, Christian concerts, etc. They've had four <clears throat> events this year on our, on our property, and they've did two special events uh, outside to help the communities. Our young adult <clears throat> ministry continues to bless those young adults with our, in our church and a larger community. It's, in a, it's a magnet for all those young people here. Their energy and commitment is a joy to see and feel. They meet on Monday nights to be taught and to fellowship with each other. <clears throat> they hold their own events also on outings. This year, one of the highlights events that they had was a young adult night of worship, which they held in downtown Leesburg. They worshiped, 300 of them worshiped at the Tally Ho Theater in Leesburg, praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord. <clears throat> and then we move on to other ministries. We're going to jump over to <clears throat> just a couple of, uh, I can share with you. There's the benevolence ministry. There's the friends and neighbors ministry. There's K groups. So there we have quite a few other ones that because of time, we're going to just uh, skim through them. But let me <clears throat> highlight one of them. We have a prayer line, a care team, and benevolence ministry that handles over 1,000 requests uh, per year. They pray for everything. They, they, you know, they share with other people when they have needs. We also visit hundreds of people in the hospital and at homes when there's a need for us to do so. So many things happen in the background that unless we say and share with you to praise the Lord for, we, people just have no idea what's going on. One new event that we had this year has been our worship ministry conducted a worship camp for our young people here at the church. Over the course of one week, they were trained in different tracks, singing music and tech track. <clears throat> On the final night of the camp, they, they made their own uh, concert. They did everything, the logistics, the, the audio, the video, they did everything, and they, they did a, con a concert where people came and listened to it. They were running all the things, sound, vocals, everything was on, their, on them to do. And overall, <clears throat> in total, we had 85 young kids who the church invested in equipping them and training them for this new generation of worship leaders that they will go and bless other fellowships wherever the Lord takes them. <clears throat> Our regular Sundays and Wednesday service continue to minister in, in worship and in the teaching of the Word of God. Like Gary said, we have guests, of course, who come in, guests, special guests. We have guest speakers every now and then. We have, of course, our big events of Easter. We have lots of the people who will never come to church, but sometimes join us at that time. And we're thankful that <clears throat> you invite people. They come. We had 11, nearly 12,000 people last Easter, this uh, last Easter, who joined and came <clears throat> and joined us over the seven services that we had in, in April. Of course, Christmas is the same thing. We had seven services, people from all walks of life, people from all different communities who are visiting here will come and join us. Again, they hear the true story of Jesus, they do the joy that he brought to the world, and they get, it, <clears throat> they get to hear what it's all about instead of being uh, taken in just what the world thinks Christmas is all about. Again, we were blessed by having 13,000 people worship with us over Christmas, over those seven slides. What we are only able to do all of those, the goodness of God, <laughs> the song we sang, and also because of your prayers, of your tithes, and your offerings, and our wonderful volunteers. We have volunteers that work at every sin single event that we have. People from, you know, greeting people at the door, to people from the parking, to people from the ushers. We have so many volunteers that we want to thank you for your gift of time, and we want to thank you for your gift of serving that you do unto the Lord. <clears throat> Just to give you a glimpse, we have 2,000 people from our congregation volunteer in some capacity. Over the year, though, the whole year, we had 37,000 unique opportunities, meaning when you add all the weeks, all the opportunities, and all of those were filled 
by the generosity of the time that we get from, from the congregation. And when that happens, when people serve, when they volunteer, it, when that happens, it allows the church to share the gospel. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit draws people to follow Christ. And when that happens, the angels in heaven will rejoice because over 600 people this past year received the Lord because of the service of the church. Some of those people, of course, have, uh, when they, uh, on their own, t took the next step of being baptized. We have a wonderful uh, place now that we do it on our own campus, and people who just accepted the Lord took this next step, and we're so joyful with them. Over uh, 220 people this past year had a chance to kind of be baptized and, be, and make that profession for themselves. I wanted to end this, what we do inside the church uh, before we go on to what we do outside of the church worlds. <clears throat> so we just want to transition now to talk about what goes on outside the four walls. What we've just focused on now has to do with what happens inside our church. But just before Jesus ascended back into heaven in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so that's kind of our focal point. Our Jerusalem, that he mentions, is kind of our local church. But then Judea is the province around it, our locality, our community. Samaria is even beyond that, and then obviously the ends of the earth is globally. And so ministry starts in the local church, but then has to get outside the four walls of the church, otherwise we're not really being effective for the kingdom. And so we want to talk a little bit about what we're doing outside the four walls of our church. Again, thanks to all your help and assistance and, and participation. And, um, and, and even as we talk about some things we're doing outside the church, I'm always convicted that even as, you know, the, our church is made up of thousands of families. You go home and then you have your own personal challenges from time to time. And so how can we come alongside of you outside of just ministry that happens in the church to assist you in what's going on in your lives outside the church sometimes. And, and so I think that it starts first with the church family because Galatians chapter six, verse 10, Paul said, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So when we hear that you're in need or you have some challenges that you're going through, then if it's within our ability and resources and gifts and provision, we're going to try to meet those needs. First for our family, and then in a minute, we're going to talk about even beyond our church family, but we're going to start there. And here's just a touching story we're going to show you by way of a short video. A family in our church has been coming for about 10 years now, the Gamble family. On a Wednesday night a couple months ago, we showed this video, but for those of you who didn't get a chance to see it, you'll be blessed by their story. So take a look at the screens. I'm John Gamble. And LaDonna. And we have a son, Anthony Kent, goes by Kent. And he is 27, and he had a traumatic brain injury at 13 months old, which left him unable to speak, walk, talk. He can't, you know, tell you what he wants, tell you if he's in pain or... So you kind of have to, you know, use your sixth sense. <laughs> God. <laughs> One Sunday morning, I wasn't able to attend church because I'd hurt my back the f Saturday before lifting Kent, and I'd actually fallen with Kent in the shower, and so um, I wasn't able to go. So LaDonna went to church, and she told Beth Newton, who is the head of the special needs program, that Kent wouldn't be going that Sunday, and I wouldn't be there because I had fallen. So Beth told her husband, Harry Newton, kind of what happened and came up with an idea about trying to help us put a lift in the house so that I wouldn't have to lift him as much any longer.
discovering he needs something very stable. This lift is going to be that savior. It's really going to help him to, to live a better life and to live a life without pain. It's a phenomenal thing that's being done and we are so appreciative. And we feel very blessed because I was telling some friends of ours, you know, they were asking, well, what are you doing? Because I said, well, I'm taking a week off. And they said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm having some work done in my house. I said, oh, who's doing it? I said, my church. They're like, your church is doing it? I said, yeah. They're like, do every church do that? I said, I don't know, but this one does. <laughs> so it was just like, wow, it is really a blessing to have such a church that supports, you know, its members as well as the community. Wow, I had to watch this a few times because I couldn't speak afterwards. So I love about it is not just the giving and the serving, but the love that is part of the giving and service. You can see it in Pastor Mike and Beth who are doing this. This, this just blesses my heart because of God's goodness, not because of just who, how good we are. Uh, the next layer that we're going to talk about today is, as mentioned, this is the foundation layer. The second one is ministering outside of the walls of our church. There's so much to cover there too. So we're gonna just say, as, as the Lord allowed us to minister within the church, going out now slowly into the community to bring the good eternal news of God's work to people who really need it through our acts of worship, uh, our acts of uh, service that we have provided. I just put one slide here for Loudoun County, quite a few ministries that we partner with. These are the bigger ones that we do this. We would love to be always helping them when they need it, uh, instead of us doing it ourselves. Also further out to the east in DC, as you know, the Museum of the Bible is there. There have been over 1.5 million people who have visited the Museum of the Bible who have been exposed to the transformative power of the Bible. And I say this because we are, we are one of the key partners of the museum and we are on their wall of gratitude that they have, along with other supporters that they do that. The, your, your church, it does that because we believe in the Bible, we believe in ministering to others who come from around the world, and that's a big venue for us. We also serve at schools around here. We supply them and we, get, we accept donations, and we donate ourselves large quantities of needed supplies to the children. We also, as you saw, we have a lot of practical project help that we do in the community, and all in all, this one year, we have helped in 60 different projects that we were able to help people in, in a time of need. I want to end this one segment by showing one more video about how the church goes out of the walls of the church to help in their times of need. I'm Gina Bingaman. I am an integrative STEM, AKA technology education teacher for Loudoun County Public Schools. My skill set for what I do teach has allowed me to become pretty skilled around the house. However, while I was waiting for my first granddaughter to be born, we had some pretty horrific weather and it flooded my basement. So my neighbors and my friends tried to take care of it while I was down with my brand new granddaughter. But when I got back, they thought they had it all under control. So I went down to take a little look around and realized it was far worse than what they saw. And already the mold had set in. So it went up the drywall. I started tearing that apart, not knowing really what I was getting into. It was in the insulation. Calling in a professional just wasn't financially possible at the time. So animals had to be um, adopted out and my family couldn't come visit me. One of my former students contacted me late in the summer, told me that he was working for a company that was local, a construction company. He wanted to stop by and just let me know about his life and then see if there was anything I could do for them on the side. And I'm like, wow, yeah, there is. I need help in the basement. I'm not even sure if I've done this correctly. So I'm waiting for the phone call from this student to let me know how they can help, when they can help, what the estimate would be. And the phone call comes, but it's from Pastor Mike Frick from Cornerstone who explains to me that this young student that you had all these years came to us. We'd like to bless you. Cornerstone has a local outreach, and we would like to come to you. The men from the Cornerstone team that came to me treated me like a princess. And I'm not gonna lie, like their skill set is just amazing when you sit back and watch what they can do. 
It's great to be here working beside them. And it's great to feel the fellowship. And it's great to feel being cared for. I am loving up a 1976 home with some lipstick and rouge, but the roof and the HVAC, the kitchen floor, you can save and you can plan. And that's what I've been doing since I purchased it a couple years ago. The flood, just, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready in so many ways, financially, mentally, spiritually, physically. I just was not ready. And it was overwhelming. And when I would come home and try to piecemeal different things together, I knew that I was in a position I couldn't handle. And then to have Cornerstone step in, I'm 20 miles away. And here they are, bringing their light here to my home, to my basement, to me. And I have to tell you now, I feel that light. And I feel that love. And I feel that, that renewed strength because Cornerstone chose to come and be the light and bring the true light to me. And I thank you. So again, Jesus said, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So our last section is just talking a little bit about global missions and what we do globally to try to reach people around the world. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, the word nations in the original Greek New Testament is ethne. We get our English word ethnic. There are roughly 17,000 different ethnic groups in the world. It is estimated that about 7,000 of those 17,000 ethnic groups have never heard the gospel. So we are in a position to be able to financially and literally serve as missionaries or partner with missionaries around the world to get the gospel to reach ethnic groups that have never really heard about Jesus. The United States sends out more missionaries than any other country in the world. Roughly one out of every four missionaries serving on the mission field have come out of the United States. About 127,000 missionaries out of roughly 400,000 missionaries around the world have come from the U.S. So we are in a position because God has been so good to us to use the finances and to send people and to partner with other ministries and organizations to try to reach people around the world. So we'll close with this last section talking about global outreach. So our last section also builds on the, the two layers that we already explained. And Gary has mentioned those layers. And the last one is how we go and minister globally. We are blessed to be able to do this because of your prayers, of your tithes and the offerings that we can help here and go abroad in our global outreach. Again, these are just some of the things that the church has been privileged to do outside the, outside the USA and around the world. Gary mentioned this, um, I'm, I'm gonna just jump into the radio ministry per, uh, directly because our radio ministry, which edits our, our, our services and they played weekly and daily and weekly across, across networks in the States. And when you add the potential of all of the ne networks, they tell us the potential listening audience that we have for the messages is over 23 million people who are capable of hearing the word if they're turning on to the radio at that time. Next one is online streaming. We have, we, we live stream all of our services uh, for those who can never make it here because of sickness or, or of people who move out of the area, they wanna still be connected. This is not just for the local people, like I said, but this is also for people who choose sometimes not to, to miss this or travel and be able to, to hear what the teaching is happening at Cornerstone Chapel across the globe. And I'm saying this if my grandkids in Jordan are watching, hi, grandpa is here. But at least we, people who are watching everywhere around the world who really routinely tune in for to hearing the God of word, the word of God. Think about this, every single Sunday, we have over 2,000 people listening on live stream outside of the church walls right we have here from diff 26 different countries of, around the world. 
uh, moving on to mission trips. We've had so much information on this one area, but we just organize mission trips. You guys volunteer. You guys pay to go on the mission trip to bless others in these areas. I'm just going to rattle some of the things. We do vacation Bible school there. We share Christ. We help individual needs and situations. We pray for others. We construct safe houses. We, for safe houses for sometimes victims of uh, sex trafficking, churches, medical facilities. We build those for them, safe uh, playground area for children. We conducted this last year a medical clinics, but over 5,000 people went through those medical clinics. The church donates over 2,300 pounds of medical supplies because of its generosity. We distribute f food to people in need because the church donates that amount of food, and mostly we just love on the people in that area. This past year, the stories of miraculous healings happening when our teams are being there being great. Hundreds of people also have come to know the Lord because of, this, uh, of these mission trips. This past year alone, five mission trips this last year, and we also support 40 missionaries and 40 mission organizations uh, year long. Uh, we also, another, one, another global ministry I want to highlight to you today is the Operation Christmas Child, which lots of you have participated. Most of you have because the numbers are phenomenal. Every year we serve as a collection center, but we also, you guys, do this on your own. Thousands of boxes come out and we stack those boxes. They come in. When we, after we stack them, we put them in the small boxes, we put them in big boxes, and then after that we put them in the two trailers, which was over, overflowing this year. And I think we had heard some ideas before, but we had 4,000 boxes from our church body returned, and they estimate that for every box, seven people are touched with the message of Christ when that box arrives. So there's about 30,000 people who will hear something about Jesus because of your generosity and your time to fill those boxes. Another global ministry that, uh, that we did is this uh, orphanage, uh, not orphanage, a school in Uganda for girls' school. Uh, I'm going to put these uh, pictures, and I'm gonna, but listen to me when I'm talking about it too. So building a dormitory for girls from the ground up in Uganda. Your church funded the project from the ground up to all its equipping to, for it to open for work. To give you a flavor why this is so important, let, uh, hear this. Young preteen and teen girls are faced a very difficult situation in these countries in Africa. They have to decide, do I walk to the school two hours a day just to get to the school and come back home, or do I have to sleep with the bus driver to get a free ride to that school? They're very hard decision. They're very dangerous things along the way also to the school. This thing here will bless girls and children who will be able to stay at the school and then go at the end of semesters or end the weekend instead of doing it at this daily trek, which is really very, very dangerous for them. Again, this is something that the church was able to bless in a specific need because of your generosity. And, and, and this will go on for years, not just for the first batch of girls, for years to come. Your church also supports a, a children's village in Malawi. Uh, I'm going to play the small video and tell you the story. The boy is called Job. His mother died when he was a young boy. He connected meningitis, lost his hearing. He can't hear and so on. So the church is working to help fund a way to get his operation. He is overjoyed. He can't say it, but he wanted to send a message to the church of helping him and so on. And he just wanted to do it in his own way by writing a thank you to you, to the notes. He's been deaf all his life, you know. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> one last global ministry that we want to be able to highlight also is the One Hope Ministry, whose only mission is to give God's word to every child around the world. This past July, One Hope invited Pastor Gary to come and speak. As they only do a global congress once every five years. They invited Pastor Gary to come speak uh, at that congress in Thailand. Pastor Gary addressed uh, the top 300 leaders for One Hope assembled from 95 different countries around the world. In addition to him speaking, Pastor Gary and Terry, and my wife and I participated in the distribution of the Bible to the children, the Bible portion of the, in the public schools in the second largest city in Thailand, Chiang Mai. And as you see in these pictures here, the reception of the school kids, these are not Christian schools, these are Buddhist schools and so on, of how we distribute the books, how we give them one by one to all those students. And, and, 
and the, the joy of them receiving it and engaging it is amazing and also loving on the children afterwards and just like kind of sharing our time with them has been a blessing this year and during this trip uh, the church cornerstone chapel through its donations uh, achieved the milestone of having distributed one million bible to children in 172 countries around the world so this is a great ministry of reaching god <clears throat> <clears throat> after disputing and after Gary had spoken, we caught up with Gary. He was uh, checking out the elephants to see if he could have survived at Noah's Ark, but there were lots of love and hugs to the elephant. It was a good thing. Okay, with everything that we shared today, as you would know, the church is, keeps being blessed because of your generosity and, and, and uh, God's favor, uh, favor on us. So to finish all this is how can we continue to, to make him known? I've, re I've said those before, please continue to volunteer. Please, please just like do whatever you feel you can do. You saw those many opportunities, keep doing this. And also be prepared to be blessed when you do that. The second one, of course, is pray for every ministry that happens in this church, only because of prayers and protection that we're able to do what God allows us to do. So thank you for that. Pray also for every decision we make as a leadership through here. Also invite your neighbors to come to the eight services of Christmas that we have. Let them be exposed to the, uh, to the Word of God. The third one, of course, is continue your generosity. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, to be generous. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, and at the end of the year or during the year, we are so thankful and grateful that there's so many ways you can do it. And if you ever need to talk about it, please feel free to contact us. In this year, in 2019, not counting all the volunteer hours, we don't, we don't add that cost, all of the internal ministry in the church that happens that you heard already. When you add all the church has been able to do to minister to outside the walls and across the globe, we will be on track to be spending 1.7 million to bless others because of your goodness and your tithes and your offering. The church doesn't just say generosity, we are generous. We apply the principal uh, biblical things that, that God has said we tithe our church ties to everything we get in, we will tie it out. I, I encourage all of you just to kind of pray and see what the Lord will put on your heart to kind of participate and, and join with us. I love this verse about the Lord, the people gave joyously and wonderfully when they, uh, when they received the, the offering. We just ask that you would do the same spirit when the Lord puts it on your heart. I just wanted to also <clears throat> uh, kind of sum it up by going back to the verse uh, that Gary mentioned also in Acts 1.8 and then apply it to the three layers that we have already shared with you. If you look at those three layers and you heard Gary what he talks about, you can see how the verse kind of wraps around all of those three things that we have been able to share with you today. So we, we, we praise the Lord for you. We thank the Lord at every mention of you, of your goodness how you do it, how you treat the church and how you donate when God puts on your heart. And we thank God for his favor and his, his graciousness on this church. Thank you. Well, so that's just a little snapshot of things that are happening around here and outside the walls of our church. And we just wanted to give you the opportunity to join in our thanksgiving for the Lord and all that he has done and is doing and shall do among us. Let's stand. We're going to sing a final chorus, and as we stand, I'm going to pray. Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Lord, we thank You for Your goodness. We give You praise and glory and honor for all that You're doing. We magnify Your name. We love You and we worship You in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing this. Come, let's sing together. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Oh, praise. 
make it a great week, you're dismissed.